Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am so glad to be with you all once again and share from God's word. We have started a small series of study about breaking the bonds of legalism. Breaking the bonds of legalism. So we, we saw that to break the bondage of legalism, we need to understand the nature of God, the character of God, the attributes of God, which is displayed in the offer of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We already read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 4, where the word of God explained to us how the gospel of Christ is of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scripture and offering Christ on the cross for the salvation of great sinners, uh, it shows the character of God. Now we ask this question, what prompted God, what prompted a holy God to offer forgiveness of sin to sinners like you and me? Why would he do that when his justice called for punishment? Why would God be gracious? Why would there even be ever be forgiveness when we are guilty sinners before him? So, in the light of those questions, we, we told there are at least five words of gospel hope which we can uh, think about and allow our mind to meditate and go through the pages of the scripture and these five words of hope which is displayed in the gospel are five attributes of God and it is displayed very clearly in the gospel. We will read some passages and we will just uh, familiarize ourselves with these five words and that is going to liberate us, free us from uh, the, the bondage of legalism. Uh, we already uh, in passing in prayer we have told that Jesus Christ came into this world with a purpose. He came to save the sinners. Save the sinners from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin and from the presence of sin. So Savior came to the sinners so that he can take the sinners out of the penalty of sin, the power of sin and the presence of sin and make them saints unto himself. Saints means what? Saints means people who are saved by the grace of God and they are set apart for God's exclusive use. But in the light of the uh, scripture, in the light of the word of God, a saint boy means a person who has been set apart for God so that God can use him for his own glory. That is exactly what he does with every child of God. If Jesus Christ saves somebody, he sanctifies them. He set them apart for himself, for his exclusive use. It's like an exclusive permanent uh, a union between husband and wife. They uh, are exclusive for one another. Nobody can share them. The same way uh, Jesus Christ is going to take that person who come to him in humble faith and repentance and acknowledging and confessing his sin. He will set that person apart. And such person will see the light of the truth of God's word. And Bible says, you shall know the truth and truth will set you free. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them by thy truth, your word is truth. So, if you want to know the truth about anything, you need to come to the scripture, the word of God. About the beginning of the world, about the beginning of the humanity, about the beginning of languages, about the beginning of every single thing. You need to come to the scripture if you want to find out the truth. If you want to know the truth about heaven, truth about hell, truth about uh, the judgment, truth about death, truth about sin, truth about salvation, truth about a savior, truth about God. So every question which linger in your heart, there is a definite truthful answer, uh, a convincing answer in the pages of the scripture. Uh, by way of introduction, I say that so that you will take the Bible seriously and consider this book, this eternal book, uh, through which the Lord has revealed himself. 
So what we are trying to say is that to break the bondage of legalism, we need to come to the truth of God's word. And Jesus Christ told, I am the truth. He himself displayed the truth. He himself is the standard for truth. He determined the truth. Uh, the truth and error is being uh, uh, measured by his standard, what he has uh, 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 revealed in the pages of the scripture. So, the son can set you free. The truth of God's word can set you free. And that is what we are trying to do by going through some of the passages and understand the attributes, characters and the, the nature of God so that we will be able to come out of the legalistic bondage. Point number one, uh, uh, the gospel tells us that God is a God of love. He is not a hateful or a vengeful God, but he is a God of love. So what motivated God to offer a salvation through a savior for worst sinners like you and me? Because God is a God of love. It's a very simple a uh, uh, simple statement, God is a God of love. It is foundational. Turn in your Bible to 1st John chapter 4. 1st John chapter 4. The gospel tells us beyond any possible contradiction that God is a God of love. Remember the prevailing uh, scriptural testimony about the nature of man. If you come to the pages of the scripture and if you look into the Bible and try to understand who is a human being every human being the bible says that the prevailing testimony the overall testimony of the bible about sinful men like you and me is that man is dead in trespasses and sin nobody need to teach him how to sin nobody need to train him in sin a, a child who is born nobody need to teach them to be proud or cranky or disobedient but the good things we need to train and teach but the bad things the unacceptable things come by default why we are born in sin bible says that we are dead in trespasses and sin and that man is dominated by the devil man is dominated by the devil and that man is destined to suffer the wrath of God as the just punishment for his sins. There is no spiritual power that any sinner has to offer to God to move toward God because he is dominated by the devil. These things are being explained from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 was 1, 2 and 3. Ephesians chapter 2 was 1, 2 and 3. If you read the, the very clear, unmistakable uh, uh, explanation about your life and my life is that we are dead in sin. We are dominated by the devil. We are doomed to suffer the wrath of God and we are doomed to death. So, uh, scripture describes us as unrighteous that there is no one who does good to the expectation of God, that there is not even one and that the heart of every man is filled with insanity all the days of their life. Why the Bible say such vivid things, such negative things? Because that is the truth. Left to ourselves, we will choose insane things. We are not wise in ourselves. We cannot trust our own heart. We need the wisdom from God. We need wisdom from the Creator so that we will be able to know Him. We cannot speculate and find Him out. We cannot speculate and know Him. We need the revealed Word of God. We need the revelation of God uh, to understand Him. So, uh, this is the fun. This is the fundamental understanding for us, and we understand this to start to unlock the key that loosen us from the bonds of legalism. Is that we are bad, we are sinners, we are guilty, we are disobedient, we are doomed to the wrath of God. It is appointed unto man once to die and then to face judgment. These are the truths, whether you acknowledge it or not. Whether you bring these thoughts into your mind or not, these are the truths and the time will vindicate, time will vindicate that we will ha have to die one day. It is appointed unto man 
wants to die and then to face judgment. And if death is a reality, judgment is a reality. And from that judgment to save you and me, God brought out a plan. And that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And scripture tells us that God is a God of love coming from uh, the Greek word agape. Uh, uh, a self-sacrificing love, deep love. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God for God is love. So 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 clearly says that love is from God. God is love. If you have your children, you know how the children fight towards one another, how they are so self-centered and sin-centered and selfish that they want the best, they want the bigger one, they want things uh, uh, as a priority. They may show some sort of philia or some sort of attachment to their siblings, but they always fight. They fight for a toffee, they fight for a cake, they fight for dress, they fight for uh, a chapel or a sandal. They and as they grow up, that tendency will never go. They fight for the house, they fight for the property, they fight for prominence, they fight for prestige. So sin is at the deepest portion of our soul. We must understand that. And here Bible says that uh, he... Who does not love, does not know God. Love is not just a feeling. In the light of the scripture, in the light of the word of God, love and like is entirely different. Like is self-centered. Whereas love is self-giving. Like means, I like this means it pleases me. But when I say I love somebody or something, I am willing to offer myself for that cause. For I am willing to give myself for the other person. That is exactly how God displayed love. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. So we can become loving person only when we have a right relationship with the God who himself is love. But one thing I will tell you. You cannot say, you can say that God is love, but love is not God. It's like this, milk is white, but white is not milk. You cannot say that uh, all what you see as white is milk. No, it is true that milk is white, but white is not milk. The same way, God is God and he is a loving God. But just you look at love and say that this is God. No, it is not like that. And the love of God means this. It means that God has sacrificially given of himself for the welfare of sinners. And you can see that as you continue on in this passage. In 1 John chapter 4, we already read verse 7. When we come to verse 9, we read like this, 1 John chapter 4 verse 9. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, so that we might live through him. By this the love of God was manifested in us. The love of God was displayed to us. The love of God was demonstrated to us. How God demonstrated his love? I will tell you on a day-to-day -day basis, if you are willing to count your blessings, name them one by one, you know that God is a loving God. He give us breath. He give us oxygen. He give us water. He give us the, the earth to live. He bring forth the herbs. He bring forth the fruit. He bring forth the vegetables. It is not our power. It may be our agricultural effort, but the, the, the crop or the product produce is given by God. And that shows that God is a caring God and a loving God. But Bible says that in a much, much superior way, much, much deep way, the love of God was manifested in us and towards us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live 
through him if we are not living in him and for him and through him we are stepping towards death we must understand that we must understand that we all are walking slowly by slowly towards our funeral ground but if you want to have life and have it abundantly have a life with a meaning and purpose i'll tell you you can you have to know the lord jesus christ as your personal savior and lord and only then and then alone you will be able to live through him and you are not just living in this world for yourself and for the pleasures of this world but you live in the light of eternity you live in the light of a life which is beyond death an unending life an eternal life a life filled with peace joy and purpose and there is a, that is a life which is filled with contentment and purpose driven life i'll tell you god demonstrated his love and that love was demonstrated and manifested and displayed in the cross of calvary because he gave his only begotten son into the world if you want to know the depth of this love i urge you to open the pages of the scripture and read for yourself you will marvel at the love of god what is the love of god god gave god sent christ god graciously gave to those who deserved nothing for from him that's the love of god and it's it goes on in verse 10 first john chapter 4 verse 10 in this is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins do you see the prompt of the love of god the prompting of the love of god it is not from us it is not from you it is not from me it is not from us the gift of salvation came from the prior pre-existent love of god and in that love motivated from that love he sent christ and as we compare scripture with the scripture we see that christ in perfect harmony with the father's plan with the father's heart and father's uh, uh, purpose in john's gospel chapter 10 verse 18 john's gospel chapter 10 verse 18 jesus christ told i come and i voluntarily lay my life down no one has taken it from me i give it freely and, and i give it freely and of my own accord we see that reflected here in verse 10 it is not from what you did it is from what god did for you out of his sacrificial love that the bible describes so often and so well and so clearly look at it again with me verse 10 in this is love verse 10 of first john chapter 4 uh, first john chapter 4 verse 10 in this is love not that we love god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved my dear friend a person who is listening to me please listen to this we when we hear the gospel we are seeing the love of god on display we are seeing the love of god manifested in a very plain and simple way for everybody to understand if you are in christ and if you belong to him understand that you have been on the receiving end of a great sacrificial love from the eternal god of the universe designed to secure your eternal well-being of your sinful soul that's great that's magnificent and you look at that and say that's an extraordinary type of love it's a love of a different magnitude it's a different uh, unconditional type of love and let's reinforce it with another passage of the scripture what we are looking the point number 
we are trying to break the bondage of legalism to break the bondage of legalism we need to know the truth and truth will set us free if the sun set you free you will be free indeed from every single guilty sin which trouble you hound you the past sin the present sin the habitual sin the secret sin the private sin the sin which you, nobody knows all those things uh, are plain before your conscience and you're hounded by that and i'll tell you you can find forgiveness and propitiation for your sins means cancellation of your sins by trusting christ because in the pages of the scripture god displayed his love his character he manifested that it is not anything in you that prompted me to love you it is not that you loved me and then i started loving god started it all gospel is the idea of god and it is not your goodness that prompted god to do that it is your sinfulness in the midst of your sinfulness in the midst of your deadness in the midst of your disobedience that god planned this great salvation through his beloved son the lord jesus christ and you see the love of god and without any doubt you say that god god is a god of love the bible explained to me a god who is a god of love let us look at romans chapter 5 verse 6 romans chapter 5 verse 6 for while we were still helpless while we were sinners at the right time christ died for the ungodly for while we were still helpless at the right time christ died for the ungodly that is what the bible says by bible is not telling that he saw somebody who is very good and godly and then he died for them no christ died for the ungodly for one will hardly die for a righteous man though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die but god demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us we were helpless we were ungodly we were sinners we were forced to god and god we were forced and enemies to god god wanted to make us his friends to bring a, into a relationship with him and that's why christ died for us he died for us when we were yet sinners god showed his love to you in christ because it was what he wanted to do it was not because you deserved it it was not because uh, uh, god is uh, 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 it was not because of some goodness in you it was because god in his very nature at the center of his being is a loving gracious god who gives of himself to sinners and that is why uh, we are saved that is why anybody can be saved and it is rooted in the unconditional unprompted unmerited love of god please come to the understanding of this particular thing god is a loving god and his love is unconditional love unprompted you did not prompt him to love you because his own nature he by nature very nature is a loving god and that nature prompted him to love us and unmerited love it is not because of the merit of uh, something what i did or you did that god uh, thought of uh, doing something for your salvation but he has provided a savior almost 2018 years back to save you and me so unconditional unprompted unmerited love of god should prompt us to love him more and be grateful to him more that's why christ went to the cross so we need to center our thoughts around christ and his cross he died according to the scripture he was buried he was raised from the dead according to the scripture that displays that god is a god of love 
Let the love of God captivate your heart and my heart unto His glory. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for teaching us uh, through these very simple and familiar passages of the scripture that you are a loving God. You manifested and displayed and demonstrated your love to us in many temporal blessings which you have added in our life. But beyond measure, beyond our uh, uh, explanation, you have manifested and demonstrated and displayed your love on the cross of Calvary by giving Christ as a substitute for our sin. Thank you for his wonderful death on the cross of Calvary so that he could purchase our salvation. He could purchase the forgiveness of our sin so that we can find reconciliation with God. We could find redemption from our sins and we can have a great relationship with God. We can recognize the plan of God. We can uh, remember the plan of God and we can rest uh, in the plan of God. And what a great privilege you have given to us. So let each and every one of us to be drawn to God because of the love of God which is an unprompted love. It is not from because of what we have done as a sinful human being that uh, prompted you to offer a salvation. But your own character, or that loving nature, the loving disposition and in that loving disposition you allowed Christ to die for us when we were at sinners, when we were ungodly, when we were rebellious, when we were weak and helpless, you died for us. So your that loving disposition is not changed at any point of time. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. So we lean on you, we trust in you and we put our faith in you. Draw each, every, each and every one of us who listen to these words to be in a right relationship with Christ and a right relationship with the word of God. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen.